Hey, this is Anonymous T. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today. Sending good vibes, sending good energy, sending blessings and um, positivity to each and every single one of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, so we are in the backup channel because Phonics Unhooked, uh, she, she is unraveled again, you guys. She is so triggered. I don't understand. I, I don't understand. Here's the thing. Here, here's how I operate, you guys. Unless somebody is directly contacting me, unless you're directly adding me, unless you're directly saying my name, I'm going to assume whatever you're talking about is whatever you're talking about, right? But when people, when a hit dog hollers, like shout out to Melanie Cherie, right, over the weekend, uh, when, when a hit dog hollers, uh, you're, you're telling on yourself you are projecting uh, because there is something in uh, whatever has been revealed, whatever has been exposed, that you identified with, that you potentially feel guilty about, right? Because there was zero need for Phonics Unhook to get triggered by an Instagram Live that Melody Sheree was doing in which she was telling a story about motherless child and, and how she had a homegirl. Last I checked, I didn't remember Letitia currently being a homegirl of Melody Shree. Last I checked, I don't remember Destiny being a current homegirl of Melody Shree because they keep throwing shots at her and shots at the Mel supporters and Melometers. So how did you deduce from this live that Mel was talking about you, that her homegirl said that she feels that certain issues and things that she has run into today as an adult uh, was because her mom was not there? Basically the gist of it, right? Apparently, in the comments, some people were making suggestions or speculations that Mel was saying somebody in the cast or referencing somebody in the cast, and Mel said nothing. But Phonics Unhooked, she's unraveled because she wanted Mel to go through her individual comments, which, which I thought you guys said you guys aren't responsible for. You can't control what people are saying and doing in the comments, but you only want Mel to do this, right? You want her to go in the comment and, and be like to every single person that thinks it's Destiny or Letitia or, or whomever to go in the comments and be like, no, that's not who I'm talking about. No, you have the wrong person. No, it has nothing to do with the Love and Marriage Huntsville cast, blah, 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 blah. You think people have time to do all of that? That's why a lot of times I do my uploads and then I unplug you guys. And then I'll come back later, look at the comments and like it a little bit later. That's why I don't always like your comments or respond immediately because I unplug you guys or I'm working on another video or I'm actually working, like my actual job, right? But there, there's a reason, there's a method behind the madness, right? Because for the most part, comments are positive, comments are supportive. You guys are all adults, you guys are all mature. Uh, and all the things. Every once in a while, we'll get some trolling, right? Every once in a while, some people are not going to be happy with my commentary. And that's okay. I don't expect anybody or every single person that watches my video to be like, oh my gosh, I, I agree with every single thing you've ever said, right? There's going to be things I say that you're not going to agree with or you're going to have a different perspective on. And that's okay. But understand, none of it is personal. I am not personally impacted or, you know losing my mind over an opinion or a take that I have about something. That is the difference between many of us and Phonics Unhooked. You should not be this obsessed with Melody Cherie Rogers that you devote a preview live on your Instagram every day. And then you go on live on your YouTube every day bashing Mel. You're up here preaching to the choir that everyone else needs to be minding their own business and needs to be uh, stop talking about everybody else and needs to be worried about themselves. But, but how come you never apply the same energy? How come you always have to insert Mel and always discuss Mel and always, you know, mention Mel in all of your lives? Can you do one live? Like I said in a previous video, can you go 24 hours without discussing Melody Cherie Rogers or her family or Martell or, or his side chick? Can you spend 24 hours and say, you know what? I am not going to do an Instagram live. I am not going to do a YouTube video that has anything to do with Melody Sheree Rogers, Mama Van, the Colt Kids, Martell, Martell Sidechick, 
nothing, right? It is going to be nothing about them. I'm going to do a video uplifting my children and my grandchildren. I'm going to do a video uplifting my husband and my side boyfriend, right? I'm going to do a video uplifting the show enough food truck, right? I'm going to do a, a video specifically promoting my brand, promoting the things that I have going on. That is all we ask you guys. Can you talk about yourself? Right? But but instead, you guys are, are watching every single thing that Melody Sheree Rogers has got going on, and I just don't understand. And, and then you are no different than what Stormy's mom did, which was you wanted Mel to go through her Twitter, go through her Instagram, and any type of negative comment that is throwing shade at the cash, you want Mel to respond to and say, oh, no, that's not what my tweet's about. No, that's not what my caption's about, right? When you're talking about somebody that has over 600,000 followers on Instagram, you guys. But it's okay for your daughter and others who have less followers than Melody Sheree Rogers to like messy comments, throwing shade at Mel, throwing shade about her, uh, you know, doctorate, uh, throwing shade at, at the things that Mel's got going on, throwing shade about her businesses, calling her the t-shirt lady, even though your daughter and your son-in-law are wearing a black with a QUE t-shirt in every scene now, but calling Mel Melody Sheree Rogers the t-shirt seller, right? Trying to throw that as a dig, counting Mel's pockets, saying that they hope that Mel becomes a billionaire, just gaslighting and manipulating the situation because it's coming from a passive aggressive place because they don't have the same level of support. You don't have the same level of support. But unless Mel said you by name, Phonics Unhooked, unless she said Letitia Scott by name, Phonics Unhooked. I have no idea why you went on this tangent. And if you are literally looking through people's comments to try to find a receipt or try to find confirmation uh, because Mel didn't respond to all of her comments, that that means she's talking about you or your daughter, you need to pipe down. You're doing way too much over the least right? If you know, oh, oh wait, and let me, let me clear this up. Uh, Mel said a motherless child. You are here talking about a motherless child. I don't know what that is. A motherless child. Can you make it make sense to me? Right. And, and is it a brag that your kids have an education and got their degrees and got their diplomas? If one kid is doing nothing with it, if one kid decided to trade in their degrees and, and doing things with real estate and all the things uh, to be on a reality TV show, to put out a kid's hairline, that's fine. But what does that have to do with your real estate background that you're supposed to be booked and busy for, right? What happened to, you know, that, that mommy podcast? What was that, season two? What, what happened to all these ventures? that your daughter, your son-in-law promoted on the show. And it only seems to be promoted when the show is filming and outside of filming, it is nowhere to be found, you guys. Nowhere to be found. You may reference it a couple of times when the show is airing or utilize, you know, the Black with the QUE platform to have watch parties and watch weekends when the show is airing. But outside of filming, what do you have going on, you guys? Because that is the only time you guys seem to be concerned about what is being perceived, what is being subliminals, what is being implied, and nobody is even saying your name. How did you deduce if Mel said a homegirl of hers, which I would assume is somebody that she has been friends with for a long time, we know the ups and downs of the makings of what happened with Letitia and Mel's downfall of their friendship, so how could you deduce that Letitia is currently a homegirl of Melody Sheree Rogers? From what Mel said in her last radio interview, she said she's quote-unquote cordial with the ladies in the cast and that they wished each other happy mother's day right but i never got the vibe that since the earlier seasons that mel and leticia were close in any capacity that that ship has sailed right because leticia your daughter is accusing mel of trying to ruin her marriage so 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 how can you have a friendship with somebody who who is speaking that type of foolery when Martel is the one that said on camera all of the rumors 
about Marceau having 20 girlfriends, right? And, and then you're going to repeat in your life, oh, the 20 babysitters. And you don't think something's wrong. You don't think something isn't connecting, right? Can you make it make sense? How can you believe somebody who has made it a point to make up every single lie possible about Melody Sheree Rogers the moment she decided to divorce him, but you never heard any of these allegations the entire time that they were together prior? But the moment Mel leaves him for good, because the cheating's been on display the whole time, right? But as long as Mel stayed with Martell, that was okay, right? And you guys can make jokes about it, right? But the moment Mel files for divorce, now all of a sudden we get cheating allegations, right? Now all of a sudden uh, Martell wants to do, do this tit for tat stuff. And, and now all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to release revenge pee, right? We never heard about any alleged other man until Mel filed for a divorce from Martell. Because we know that men, if Mel really cheated on Martell, do you think he would have stuck around? Because men cannot handle women cheating because they believe that it's a lot more than just the physical involved, it's emotions involved as well. So therefore, they feel that there is a level of attachment that is different from their cheating. So they find it unforgivable in several instances, right? So with that being said, and having all of that intel, especially a narcissist like Martel, you really think that Martel would have stuck around if Melody Sheree Rogers was out here in these streets. And then you had no problem repeating a rumor alleging that Sugar Mama was not Martel's and saying you heard it from the streets or whatever, and you heard it allegedly from Martel, right? All of that is okay, but when the same energy is given back to you, it's a problem, and we all need to have prayer, we all need to find God and be Christians, uh, we all need to be worrying about our own things, we, we need to say kids are off limits, but kids are not off limits to you. Insulting somebody is not off limits to you at all, and you're insulting somebody who's not even thinking about you. Literally in the preview for the next episode, Mel is talking to your son-in-law because she is saying to your son-in-law, how are you going to demand me to control a fan base when I have over 600,000 followers? Meanwhile, you have a mother-in-law that won't keep my name out of her mouth every single day. Whether you have been on the show or off the show, you have devoted your life to Melody Sheree Rogers. Here's the thing, like I always say, if I can't stand somebody, it's out of sight, out of mind. I have no reason to be invested in their lives for somebody I can't stand. I have no reason to be watching their TikTok lives, their Instagram lives, their YouTube lives, whatever they've got going on, and tracking everything they've got going on, tracking their property preservation business, tracking 7th Avenue Beauty and trying to throw shade at it, tracking all of their merchandise, tracking their cosmetics line, tracking when they go on vacation, trying to track who they are or are not in a relationship with, uh, trying to track, you know, all of these things, and then trying to throw shade at her music career and saying she's no Beyonce for what? Did Melody Sheree Rogers tell you she was trying to be the next Beyonce? Because for all intents and purposes, all she's been releasing is singles. I don't even think she's released an EP or even a full album. She's released, what, four or five songs? She hasn't even put out an EP. This is just something um, in additional because she's considered an independent artist. She is not a large artist who is backed by a major label to where there is responsibilities of her to put out a full album, to go on tour three or four months out of the year, to do all of these music videos, to do all of these performances. No, 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 no. This is something ancillary that Mel is doing on the side in addition to the other businesses that she has, right? She found it that it was something for fun, something she's doing independently. And like she said, she releases songs as need be, right? As she feels like it, as the wind blows. But she is not looking at this to treat it like a career like Beyonce is, right? Where there's like a whole rollout of an album. There's a whole three or four month tour. There's all of these things. No, 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 no. 
Mel has several businesses and several projects that are outside of her recording songs, Phonics Unhooked, and you know that. But you cannot help but throw shade and be messy. And, and then why is Mama Van catching heat, catching drags, catching insults, and, and catching all these things when, when nobody is... Mama Van is the least problematic of all. She is the least problematic of all. And not only that, she's the least problematic mom of Love and Marriage Huntsville. You have Martell's mom now all of a sudden switching up on Mel, throwing shade and coddling her uh, son and doesn't want to hold him in a, any accountability or any responsibility for his role in the demise of the marriage. You then have Stormy's mom. She comes onto the show. Her entire storyline is about Mel. Uh, is comments on Twitter and Mel needing to clarify any tweet or any video that she makes uh, because if somebody interprets it as she's talking about somebody from the cast and people take it and run with it, it's Mel's responsibility to stalk her comments and clarify in every single comment who she's talking about. When if she hasn't said your name, you shouldn't assume it's you in the first place. And then, of course, we have you, who came on the show specifically to fight all of Letitia's battles. Because Letitia is not grown enough to say what she needs to say to these people's faces. And the only time she attempted to, it had to be with Letitia turn up liquor courage uh, to try to get somebody together. And it ended up falling flat, and she ended up embarrassing herself, which her own husband, Marceau, had to scold her. And what is this flex that your daughter is married to Marceau and it doesn't matter what happened in their marriage, she married him for love, and as long as they're still married, that's all that matters, regardless of what has happened or how bad things in the marriage have happened. How is that a flex? How is that something successful to brag about? If something bad went down in the marriage, something that most would consider to be a deal breaker, why are we celebrating the fact that she's still legally somebody's wife? If most people, if there was something that bad that happened that would be considered a deal breaker to them, they would, the average person would leave the marriage. But you seem to have this warped mindset that you are only validated if you are legally somebody else's wife, if you uh, are, you know, and it doesn't matter how toxic, how dysfunctional the marriage is. It doesn't matter how bad the husband treats you. It doesn't matter if the husband completely insults you and talks to you like a child on national television. It doesn't matter that the husband tells you on national television that you and your family are from the other side of the tracks. It doesn't matter if your husband on the last episode of the show tells your daughter that she was acting gutter, that she was playing down in the gutter. That is the marriage that you are hyping up, Phonics Unhooked. Somebody who cuts down their wife every single chance that they get, but as long as she's legally still Mrs. Marceau Scott, that's a flex for you. That's an accomplishment for you. No matter how bad things are, but you didn't have that same energy when there was rumors that Marceau was not being a good husband to Letitia. You all of a sudden had smoke then. But now all of a sudden you want to use it as a flex that she's still married because Mel's now divorced. And you're the same person that told Mel to her face that nobody was going to want her because she asked for kids. But now all of a sudden it's okay to imply that she's out here with these other men. The same men that you said she, she that no one would want her. But when the goalpost moves for you to try to make a point, now all of a sudden all that goes out the window. Can you make it make sense, Phonics Unhooked? But again, Mama Van has nothing to do with this, and really Mel has nothing to do with this. You just wanted a reason to insert yourself into all things that pertain to Mel. And the bottom line of all of this, the real issue at hand, the real problem you guys have is the support that Mel receives from her fan base. The fact that anything that Mel puts out, her stuff sells out. And you guys cannot replicate that success. So all you guys do instead is you stalk 
Anybody that talks about Melody Sheree Rogers, uh, you stalk all of the things that Melody Sheree Rogers has going on. You follow her on Instagram. You follow her on Twitter. You follow her on TikTok. You follow her on YouTube. You follow her music on Spotify and Apple Music and Tidal and see if she's got a new song out. You watch all of her music videos. You look through any type of tweet or comment or, or anything that is posted. And you try to look for a reason reason to try to insert yourself and play the victim when Mel's not talking about you, Mel's not thinking about you. Trust and believe. When Mel is on business and has that kind of time to call you out, she's not going to be afraid to say your name. She's not going to be afraid to tell it how it is and tell you how she really feels about something. But again, you guys are so triggered, you guys are so upset, you guys are feeling such a certain type of way of, you know, Mel not crumbling and, and falling down and being miserable and being broke and needing Martell that all you have at this point to do is insult all of Melody Sheree Rogers' ventures. And you try to pin her and Stormy against each other. You try to pin her and Letitia against each other. What happened to celebrating all black women? What happened to celebrating all black female entrepreneurs, right? But I guess, I guess we have to pick and choose, right? When you want to use it to cut somebody else down, right? So, so really, it's not celebrating all black women and all black female entrepreneurs, right? Because you still want to put your daughter above everything else. You have to use what everyone else is doing as a measuring stick towards your daughter. But you never want to point out any of the things that your daughter has been in the wrong for or any of her actions that have been messy, any of her actions that have been two-faced, any of her actions that have been, you know, passive-aggressive. And you want to throw out the degrees. Again, all of us have degrees, Phonics Unhooked. But what matters is, you know, what you're doing with your life, right? Here's the thing. Anybody can get a degree, but that does not teach you how to be street smart. That doesn't teach you the way of life and how to navigate it, right? And a degree is for a particular area of interest. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the interest that you end up in, right? And it doesn't mean just because you have a degree that you're going to be guaranteed a career that's going to make you a lot of money either. And then the comment that Mel is uh, using, you know, her kids used, used her marriage for fame. What? So, so how is it that your daughter and son-in-law are on the show as well? And they're not using the reality TV show is for fame and clout. And going on Instagram lives and, and getting in the comments on Facebook and going back and forth with people about the show that they're not fame hungry. And liking messy comments about Melody Shree Rogers or the Melometers or Mel supporters, how is that not being fame hungry? Because basically that would indicate that you want people to like the show, but you only want people to like you on the show. And that if people don't like you on the show or they have a problem with you on the show, you excuse them liking messy comments if it's an insult to Mel or an insult to another cast member, right? But the moment that it is about your daughter, now all of a sudden it's a problem. But the moment that somebody is telling their own story on their own platform and they're not even saying your name or your daughter's name, you still find a way to insert yourself because it's a projection. Because there was something in that story that triggered you, that you identified with. And instead of acknowledging that, or I don't know, doing the mute challenge, you decide to go on your platform and throw out digs, throw out insults to Mel and her mom, use curse words and all these things. Again, making threats to people. For what? What are you achieving? What are you accomplishing with this behavior? All you're doing at this point is just showing you're obsessed. And you're looking for anything to hold on to to throw shade at Mel, even if she's not even talking about you. And again, if somebody in the comments can tell me what a muddleless child is, I would greatly appreciate it. 
But if it didn't apply to you, Phonics Unhooked, why are you so upset? If you're not the motherless child Mel was talking about, why are you so triggered? Why are you making this a point to say that Mel needs to go in her comments and, and address anybody that thinks it's Letitia? When Mel's, the first word out of her mouth was that this was coming from a homegirl. So that alone should have told you she was not talking about Letitia. When has Mel ever considered Letitia a homegirl? Season one? Like, let's keep it a buck. Are, are they still blocked? Do they still block each other on social media? Because I don't block my homegirls on social media. And, and see, none of this requires a degree, Phonics Unhooked. It requires common sense, right? You seem to think that, you know, you can just say anything about everyone and it's going to be okay and it's going to ride. Until Mel says your name, until Mel says your daughter's name, why are you doing the most right now? Make it make sense. So there is that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.